Hi, I'm Mr Parker and this is question 3 on the OCR Mechanics 1 paper from January 2009. For more questions on this exam paper, click the link here or check in the video description. Question 3. Three horizontal forces act at the point O. One force has magnitude 7 newtons and acts along the positive x-axis, that's this one here. The second force has magnitude 9 newtons and acts along the positive y-axis, so that's this force here. The third force has a magnitude of 5 newtons and acts at 30 degrees below the negative x-axis, so that's this force here. In part 1, we need to find the magnitudes of the components of the 5 newton force along the two axes. So we're looking at this force here, the 5 newton force, and saying how much goes in the x-direction and how much goes in the y-direction. So we'll do the x-direction first. We have a total force of 5 newtons, and the component of that that's going to go in the x-direction is going to be 5 cosine 30, because 30 is the angle in between the force and the direction we're going in. So the x component is going to be 5 cosine 30. However, because in the question it says the 7 newton force here is acting along the positive x-axis, that means to the right is positive, so this force is acting in the negative direction, and we need a minus sign in front of the 5. Cosine 30 is root 3 over 2, so we get minus 5 root 3 over 2. And that gives us minus 4.33 newtons. Because it says find the magnitude, you could, if you want, just have done 5 cosine 30 and got 4.33 here. You still get the marks for that. Let's do the y direction. So first of all, it's going downwards, which is in the negative y direction, so we're going to have a minus sign in there. We know the angle between the force and the x direction, so to calculate the component of the 5 newton force in the y direction, we're going to do 5 sine 30. So whatever we have here for the x component, if we have cosine here, we'll always have sine for the y component. So we've got minus 5 sine 30. Sine 30 is a half. So that's going to give us minus 2.5 newtons. Once again, if you've just put 2.5, you'll still get the marks because it's only asking for the magnitude. But as you'll see in part 2 for this question, it's useful to have the correct signs for these components. In part 2, we need to calculate the magnitude of the resultant of the three forces. Calculate also the angle the resultant makes with the positive x-axis. So whenever we've got three forces acting in different directions, it's useful to turn them into two forces at right angles to each other. And I'm going to do that by drawing a table which resolves in the x and y direction. So first of all, I'm just going to label each of these forces. I'm going to label this one A, this one B, and this one C. Now it doesn't matter which letter I give them, it's just to keep track of what I'm doing in the table that I'm about to draw. I'm going to resolve each of these forces in the x direction and the y direction. So I'll start with force A. And that's got no component in the x direction because it doesn't go across at all. So I'm going to put 0. And all of it is in the y direction, so I'm going to put 9. Force B. I've got 7 newtons going in the x direction. And 0 newtons going up or down, so 0 in the y direction. Force C. I've already done the calculations in part 1. I've got minus 5 cos 30 going in the x direction. Remember force C is in the negative x direction because in the question they said the 7 newton force acts along the positive x axis and that's going in this direction so this has to be negative. It also has to be negative in the y direction because it describes the 9 newton force as being in the positive y direction. So we get minus 5 sine 30 as shown in part 1. So to work out our resultant force R, first of all we'll add these together. So we'll get 7 minus 5 cos 30. And this one will be 9 minus 5 sine 30. So I'm going to draw a little diagram to reflect these two forces. But before I do that, I'm just going to use my calculator to get a rough idea for how big these two forces are. So this one is approximately 2.67. So in the y direction, we have 6.5 exactly. So we've taken these three forces and we've turned them into two forces. One that goes horizontally 
that is approximately equal to 2.67. And we've also got a vertical force which is 6.5 newtons. So our resultant force is the one that goes from the beginning of the first force to the end of the last force there. So we've made ourselves a right angled triangle where the resultant force is the hypotenuse and the angle the resultant makes with the positive x-axis is going to be the angle theta which I'll put in here. So to calculate the magnitude of R I can say that R squared equals 7 minus 5 cosine 30 squared plus 9 minus 5 sine 30 squared which I've already worked out is exactly 6.5 so I'll put plus 6.5 squared and that gives me 49.37 and so on so to get R all I need to do is square root it and I get 7.03 to 3 significant figures To find the angle that the resultant makes with the horizontal, we can use some basic trigonometry with this right angle triangle. And I'm going to say that tan theta is opposite over adjacent. So 6.5 divided by this 2.67, which is actually 7 minus 5 cos 30. So to get theta, I can do inverse tan of 6.5 over 7 minus 5 cos 30 which gives me 67.7 to 3 significant figures so the magnitude of my resultant force is 7.03 newtons and the angle it makes with the x-axis is 67.7 degrees